Okay, I think we're live. I think this is going out. Not 100% sure because when I rescheduled this uh, last week, I kind of forgot to uh, change the time. And I didn't also did not turn on the lights. So let's do that. There we go. A little bit of light. Not a lot of light, but hey, doesn't matter. So hello, everybody that is out there, comes upon this screen, uh, this stream. Yeah, it'll be a screen. This stream tonight or later, whenever you may come by, if anyone can ever come by and see it. Just going to be looking at some pictures tonight. Some drawings, actually, by a gentleman who went by the name of Fidus. Let me get his picture up there just because. Oh, hey, Carrie, welcome. Hopefully you had a, a nice Christmas. Got all your food cooked and eaten. Uh, let's see. I think this is the best way to do it. We'll find out, won't we? All right, so that's the man of the hour. That would be uh, that would be Mr. Fidus right there. Um, as he appeared in 1902. That was actually the height of the, the man's career. Um, he was one of the more famous illustrators or more popular illustrated from a magazine called Jugend in German, Germany in German. Also in also in German it was called Jugend. He has crazy eyes. Well, he is an artist, so he probably was crazy. Actually, I think he may well have been, all things considered. Um, uh, because this guy, as the Nazis, well, first he converted to a kind of nationalistic uh, Germanic religion that was reportedly a mix between German paganism and Chris Christianity. And then as the Nazis started uh, coming to the fore, he was a uh, apparently a, a quite a vocal admirer of Nazi philosophy and Nazi ideas as far as physical perfection and all that stuff. And then ironically, in I believe it was 1932, let me take a look at his bio to make sure I'm not getting that wrong. He uh, he found himself, uh, found his work completely banned by the Nazis and nobody could buy his work. He couldn't sell his work. He couldn't, he couldn't work basically as an artist. Um, let's see. Yeah, he was born a son of a confectioner. He held uh, mystical theophilosophical the beliefs and the interest of German mythology. Um, drew peasants and warriors. Lots of naked people. Uh, that was his thing. So he was a he was a big kind of art, you know, during the Art Nouveau period. And he was, uh, as I said, cornerstone of Jugend. In fact, he was in some corners credited for the. Uh, oh God, I forget the name of what that style was. I hope they mention it here. Uh, no, they don't, of course. But he also did a lot of ex libris and posters and all sorts of things. Um, uh, said so about 1900, he was one of the best known painters in Germany and had come to be an influence upon writers and authors. Um, I haven't actually ever seen any of his paintings. I've only seen his line drawings. But by, by about the end of World War I, his popularity started to fade. And yeah, here it is. He joined the Nazi party in 1932. But the Nazi regime was not fond of him, um, probably because he, I don't know whether he was homosexual or not, but he did illustrations of homosexual magazines. Um, he uh, went to 
uh, prison as a youth uh, uh, to support uh, public nudity. But by the time 1937 rolled around, Nazis rounded up his paintings, rounded up magazines that his work appeared in, and forbade anyone from buying or selling his paintings or hiring him to do work. And so by the time he died in 1948, he was pretty much uh, forgotten because, again, his career stalled circa 1918. Nazis tried to erase him from existence in 1937, despite his party membership, despite his... Uh... Actually, that might have been his downfall. There was a sort of a one of a Hitler's inner circle put out a call for portraits to be drawn of the little great man. And uh, Fidus here, he did one of those portraits and apparently did not go over well with uh, Der Führer. And I mean, maybe that was so maybe that was what caused them to finally get rid of Fidus. But um he became popular in the 60s well re was rediscovered in the 60s and uh a lot of the sort of psychedelic concert posters and i'm this is what also on wikipedia here wikipedia wikipedia a lot of his concert post a lot of psychedelic concert posters that whole style of art from the 60s um the san francisco kind of trippy style his art reportedly um, influenced that, but he he died in 1948, and uh, and yeah, so that's uh, and Carrie says nothing wrong with public nudity. Well, apparently Europeans in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s did not agree. Uh, because, yeah, it was in 1886 is when he met Carl Wilhelm Dieffenbach, the apostle of nature, big nudist guy. And he joined his commune in near Munich. And uh, But his nickname Fidus came out of that, according to Wikipedia here. Um, and Fidus means faithful. But his real name was Hugo Reinhold, uh, Hugo Reinhold Karl Johann Herpner. That was his real name. But onward to the sort of main function of tonight. Uh, at some point here. Uh, basically looking at some of his illustrations. Uh, maybe coming up with uh, captions or, or storylines. Actually, the ones I've selected, I've already kind of... They're, they're from the late 1800s into the early 10s um so they carry a they, they cover from a, a wide range of, of time but i've already sort of come up with a little story for them um <laughs> yes Gary says, what a name for hugo reinhold karl johann herpna yes <clears throat> herr herpna probably um, when well, he was going by Fidus, but yes, that was his real name. So, but we're going to stick with calling him Fidus because it's shorter and easier to say than Hugo Reinhold Karl Johann Herpta. <clears throat> and saying his name, I'm realizing how badly my German has faded in well, it's been 20 years since I used it last, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised um, in any major way. Uh, but anyhow, like I said, I um, already came up with kind of a rough storyline for some of the illustrations, calling it the Waterboy Saga. And as always, when I'm when I think I'm going to do a, a stream with a plan and with some organization behind it i run out, of, run out of time and it's never quite as organized as i want it to be and so these water boy illos are not quite are not quite as 
as organized as I would like them either. So some of them are not completely, uh, some of them probably don't belong in the series where I've got them. Some of them probably are not totally finished. But hopefully, um, hopefully, it, you know, it'll be just nice to look at the pictures and um, if anybody come up with something funny about them. Like, for example, here, this is, this is actually the one that, this one has a caption already, and it's also in the selection. It'll be popping up later because it's toward the end of the Waterboy saga. But I, uh, this, this one popped into my head immediately when I first uh, saw it. Let me stop this screen share. And we will switch it to... Da, da, da. Uh, this screen share, if I can manage it. This is why people have real YouTubers have uh, you know, people helping out. Uh, da, 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 da. Or maybe they don't. I don't know. Maybe they're just better at this than I am. Lord knows I am not very good at this. Um, I guess I gotta go to here. Yep, there we go. All right, so we'll just do this to make it easiest. Okay, so there we have one of Fidus's drawings. Uh, this is one of his ex ex libris libris size libruses ex libris. They're basically book plates, and this is one of the book plates he drew. For some reason, people wanted book plates with boobies and naked people in them. Why? I don't know. Some of these book plates, not in this series, because Fida says when you got when you're naked, you're naked, no matter whether you're a man or woman. And uh, but in this one, um caption that I've added to it, his last words, I can't breathe. He died happy. So that's my level of sophistication and uh humor. Um <laughs> Yeah. Not sure if Carrie doesn't approve of, of, of my uh, my caption for the illustration or whether she is shocked, shocked by um, <laughs> probably probably that's how most guys want to go out. <laughs> but anyhow, there, that's Fidus right there. And let's just, uh, uh, let's go to the, go to another one here. So yeah, they're kind of in a rough order to sort of tell a, a, a made up story. So once upon a time, there was a girl in the or a young woman in the uh, land of of uh, in a land where they had yet to invent clothes, and she wanted something exciting to happen, wanted something different to happen. So she's she was praying to the to the birds in the sun one morning, and that's a picture of her praying to the birds in the sun one morning. Again, Fidus's art, a lot of it is uh, you know. Uh, intended to show the human body and worshiping nature. Um, so um, people raising their arms to the sun, that seems to be a common theme in a lot of his illustrations, or walking into the sun. But yeah, she's at the edge of the water, praying to the sun. And yeah, Actually, there's another sort of fight a series that uh, of his illos that I put together. Uh, yeah, like it's, it's called the Redhead. You know, maybe I'll throw that one up here too at some point and see. Uh, Harry says, "I hope she doesn't get sunburnt." Yep, 
she does risk that. Lots of skin cancer potential here too. Melanoma, all that stuff. Um, ooh, I could even use this to prove the flat Earth, couldn't I? Because look at that horizon line; it's perfectly flat. <clears throat> I just knew where it was at. So, yeah, I have no real cute comment about this one. Um, well, then I always find this little bird up here kind of weird. And I'm looking at it again, and I'm, you know, is that a bird or is that uh, Icarus up there? But if it's Icarus, he's going the wrong direction. So it's probably not Icarus. Probably is a bird. Let's zoom in. Oh, look at... No, that, that's a bird. That, Or is it a man? Is that a bird? Is that a man? Is it Superman? No, probably not. Anyhow. Um, I have nothing witty about this drawing. Something will come to mind at some point, other than it's the first first instance in the uh, Waterboy series. And uh, let's see. Whoops. And as if answering her call to the sky, a boat came across the ocean. And on that boat was... A young man who, uh, I don't know, has lost his clothes, forgot to pack his clothes. This is another one of Fidus's uh, Ex Libras. Actually, all of these are Ex Libras. And so this spot where it's blank, that typically had the name of the person that commissioned the illustration to had to put in his books. Um, yeah, that's one thing. I never had any issues with, with washing clothes in the land of, uh, um, well, they hadn't invented it, land of the naked. Oh, this reminds me. I am drinking eggnog. And but in the eggnog is booze because a very kind friend of mine gave me the gift of um, of booze. In fact, gave me the gift of mermaid booze. The mermaid booze I've plugged before on this channel. I've got some of it in this, some of this in this cup of eggnog here because it's yummy. And I thought he'd gotten me a bottle of the uh, mermaid liqueur that I already tried. But I looked at it closer, and it's a it's a it's a completely different uh, flavor. Haven't tried this one yet. Probably won't get around to it until tomorrow or the next day. Uh, have to be careful about boozing it up too much tonight because I uh, once again it's Friday tomorrow. I've got an early morning meet morning meeting. I got to be at. But yeah, this is I wish cream liqueur, and that's really all I know about it. Seventeen percent alcohol, forty proof. As opposed to this one, which I remember, if I recall, is 37% alcohol. Uh, what does that say? Ah, who cares? But uh, yeah, I believe that one is 37%. That can't be right. Now I care, because... Once again, thrilling YouTubing here. Uh, Red on red, I can't ever see that. Or pink on red. I'm sure people that actually see colors right can, but it's bad for me and my inability to distinguish. 40 was an alcohol? Really? That can't be right, can it? I have no idea what that says. I will have to take a look at that later. Me? Gone through too much alcohol? I don't know about that. Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I've been working too much to go through too much alcohol recently. 
Uh, they frown upon showing up drunk at work. But anyhow, so yes, here we have uh, the water boy finding the new land and going ahoy. Yeah. Well, he forgot to pack his clothes or lose them. I don't, I can't really say. But yes, Carrie, it is very much yum. And this one, the Spanish dancer one, that's basically uh, espresso and, and, and vodka. So it goes well with the eggnog, actually. Um, uh, let's see here. So here we have our hero. He's made landfall. Uh, still not wearing any clothes. Maybe he knew this was the land of. Uh... Ah, okay. <laughs> well, it is Christmas time. You are in Australia, so I, you guys, just go through just go through booze. You go through booze the way Americans go through guns. I think, don't you? Um, kindergarten classes have booze. <laughs> So yeah, here's Water Boy. He's getting a quick little drink of water. <coughs> Actually, this was the picture that made me decide, okay, he's Water Boy. <coughs> no real reason other than that. Um, another one of the other ex Libras. So I'm sure this scene has significance to the person that commissioned it. But personally, I don't really guy at probably got off a boat drinking in a while uh. <laughs> oh that was definitely a damn you autocorrect moment there <laughs> So I take it she told you you had a, she had other plans for Christmas and uh, would not be coming by. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, whoops. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there's Water Boy drinking, and again, he did a lot of this. I mean, the frame, the frames around his drawings for the for the ex libras are always very elaborate. This one here, he's trying to emphasize the whole natural thing, um, even if the well isn't very natural, I guess. But you know, naked with a boat by the beach, I guess that's uh, kind of. Kind of natural, but it definitely. Uh... Oh yeah, that could be. It could re that. You're right. It could represent the fountain of youth. That had not occurred to me. Um... But yeah, you got the clouds and the birds. Again, it's pretty a uh, standard thing. But yes, this is Water Boy. His first arrival in. The land of no clothes, land of naked, I'm not sure. But at least he'd be in all uh, courteous and hiding his junk. Yeah, fountain of youth, that makes sense actually. Could be what this represents. I also just like his, I just like his line, his, the line work. It's just, it's very clean. It's actually very sort of, um, actually reminds me of some, some comic book artists that I like. So I guess I just like this fairly even, uh, ink style that he has.
Oh, I'm glad because yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good one. I like it. Composition is nice. The scene, the set is just it's just a nice drawing. And uh, let's see the next one. This is the one that I want that at some point I'm going to have to do a funny caption for. Um, just because I don't know the her expression. I find her expression funny. I mean, he clearly looks like he's so here. Water boy, you know, he's met the girl. Uh, you know, that was praying for him to arrive. There's actually a drawing with her by herself, but I did not get around to clean it up for the purposes of this. So it's still really rough looking. So I, I haven't, uh, so it's not really going to be part of this little exhibit tonight, but the expression on her, I mean, he looks sad. There's no question about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is a risk that she's taking. That is definitely for sure. That is for sure. But her expression is kind of like, at least in my mind, is sort of like a what? Huh? So he either said something very strange or um, he's, he's sad and she doesn't know why he's sad or he's he just asked something very weird. I don't know. Um, you have that look on a regular basis. Probably about 80% of the time you're looking at, at, at what people are doing on YouTube, I would imagine. But yeah, I just love her. What sort of expression that she has there. Uh, <laughs> And again, I just like his style. And he also, the drawings will either be signed F or Phytus. Um, and that's another sign that these are kind of from random times because he went through periods where it's just F and then other periods where he signed it Phytus. So these are not in any kind of chronological order. Um, but I think maybe, you know, it could be that Waterboy is... He's looking sad because he, uh, oh, here we go. This one is not in the right order, but uh, this should have probably been before this one. But I was going to say that I think maybe Waterboy has uh, come to be sad over the lack of clothes. And that could be what's going on. But I forgot this one. Because I haven't quite cleaned it up. You can see this a little darker than the others because I haven't gone in and uh, uh, finished up cleaning the you know, cleaning the line work up. And the Ex Libris logo is still here as well. Because most of those others had Ex Libris and then the book collection for which they were the person that commissioned it down here written. Uh, he was one of the one of the for a few, for about a decade, a guy that did tons and tons and tons of these. But yes, here they are with their nakedness all hanging out. Waterboy and, uh, I don't know, never did name the, never did name the woman, but yeah, that's why I went ahead and marked this stream mature right out of the gate because, uh, can't let Kitty seeing that. And plus, I got to talk about mermaid booze, um, which is even better. <laughs> yeah, so it could be, it could be that's, could be that's what happened. Um, Waterboy and, uh, and the girl were hanging out. And maybe that's what he said. It, you know, if, it, if you could put on some clothes, it maybe wouldn't be so bad or be so small. Or, I don't know. <laughs> but yes, here we have uh, naked fightest people in all of their uh, naked glory. 
I wonder if the word naked will flood, will 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 trigger the YouTube uh, uh, robot spies that are that look for uh, inappropriate stuff. I don't know. We'll find out. But yeah, so and actually, originally this drawing. So I, I suspect again, this drawing was had relevance to the people who commissioned it because down here there was actually the name of of a couple. That had the same last name, so, um, so this was for their book collection. So this is probably idealized portrait of them, I would think. I don't know though. I'm just guessing because, um, frankly, I haven't. A couple of the people whose names showed up on these, uh, not the finest ones, but uh, guy named uh, Istvan Drehos, who was even more who was kind of the ex Libris guy for a long, long time, did like almost a thousand of things. I, I looked up a few of the people that he did them for. Um, most of them have really left not really much of a trace that I can, one can Google. Uh, but a couple have, and actually a couple of the clients that Fidus here did drawings for were actually people that, that pop up as Oh yeah, this guy was a was a Nazi so and so back in the day. Um, but most of his clients, I haven't looked up. Some of, like I said, mostly I tried to find Drehoses, Dre Drehoses, Drehoses, Hungarian guy, name is spelled D D R A H O S. I have no idea how to pronounce that because I do not know Hungarian. Um, but anyhow, here they are, the happy couple. Not looking very happy, looking dramatic. Oh yeah, here's that drawing of her, the girl. They have to come up with a name for the girl. And Waterboy, I guess that's not much of a name, but uh, so at least Waterboy had a name. And I'm looking at this, and I couldn't quite figure out: is this supposed to be a siren or a mermaid or something? Is she underwater? Looking at these rocks. Is that supposed to be sort of algae? And she's holding glowing crystals or some sort of treasure here. And originally, yeah, the words here, this again, like I said, this one isn't, I'm not done with this one, cleaning this one up. Um, X Libris, and then the name of the commissioner down here. Actually, I think this one said um, for the library of it, then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I can't decide what he was trying to convey here. Whether this is, again, a siren or something sitting on the, sitting on the seafloor. Uh, it's just what the stuff on the rocks is what makes you wonder. It could also just be uh, moss, I guess. And there's his signature kind of hidden. He did that sometimes to incorporate the signature into the line work. Anyhow, again, oh crap, I keep doing that. Damn it, someday I'll remember to actually make sure I'm on the right screen when I start pushing buttons. You guys don't see when I screw it up, but I make it so I can't see a damn thing on my other on my other monitor when I push the wrong button. Uh, let's see. I just like that expression for some reason. <laughs> um, anyhow. So he's bearing his soul or something. Maybe, maybe she's playing a sad tune. I don't know. But let's go with he's he's missing clothes. He wish he had some he he, he he wish he had clothes to wear. So he goes about introducing clothes to the land of no clothes. And again, I haven't quite finished the cleanup on this. And that was a little too big. So yes, there we have the girl. What the hell? Who are you? And you. Oh no, I've lost it. Ah. 
Ah, where'd it go? Wow, disappeared. Okay, well, let's do this. Wink. It's back. So now he has the sort of what the hell expression on his face. The guy does. Um, or shock expression. Hers was more sort of really. That's weird. And he has the expression at least looks shocked to me. So he's sitting there working at the loom. The girl with the harp is either doing something or saying something. And oh, that could be it. Ah! That had not occurred to me, but yeah, I guess it is actually. I had this look of surprise, but yeah, that is kind of a look of terror. <laughs> so, either she's saying something very unpleasant, or he's looking off stage at something unpleasant. Yeah, this might, this, I, I would assume this is some sort of scene from a, uh, a fairy tale or a legend of some sort that I'm just not remembering. Um, or this could be some weird illo that uh, means something to the guy that commissioned it, or Phytus, and so it became an ex libris. Because again, that's what all of these are. And the frame, once again, kind of elaborate and very interesting but yeah so here he is making clothes for the uh land of no clothes the girl is telling him something maybe she's telling him why there are no clothes in the land and that he's making a terrible terrible mistake Really hard to say. Unless someone has what uh, exactly what he is saying or doing. And, um, oh, I guess I should have mentioned this at the top. Uh, when I set up this stream, I, I had to reschedule it due to life issues. And I forgot to do anything but reschedule on YouTube. So if it's popping up on Twitter or Facebook somewhere else and you're making comments, hi, sorry that I'm not responding, but all I'm seeing right now are uh, YouTube comments. Um, so yeah, sorry if you're out there talking and I'm, I'm not trying to intentionally ignore you. I just messed up on the scheduling and then I forgot to uh, open up windows and such. And at this point, Eh, not gonna do it. So, come watch on YouTube if you want to make if you want to make comments. Ah, and yeah, picking my nose on air. Yay me. <clears throat> so yes, he is bringing clothes to the land of no clothes. So he must. So as I'm saying this, the editor in me, story developer in me, is going, "Wait a minute. He's got a loom. He's got all these cabinets." He must have just have built these. What? How does he have? Is it called a loom when you you? Yeah, it is, right? Yes, yeah, it's... it's a loom. Yeah. So he must have built this water boy, or he was on his boat. Yeah, there you go. He he, he had all this on his boat. He probably came to the land of no clothes for the purposes of opening a clothing store. There you go. I just made the story better. And the girl here just revealed the real reason why nobody has clothes in this land. Yeah, I don't know why all of a sudden I thought I was using the wrong word. Um, okay, this is a very small thing, and it's probably only something that, again, I'm going to show how weird I am. But one thing I actually like about 
Fidus's art, a lot of it, that very few people seem to actually do. Oh, for God's sakes, I did it again. Is. Muscle and flesh is malleable, right? So when you sit on something hard, there will be a, a dent. I like the fact that he actually draws his figures to the point where when they're sitting on things and they're over an edge, the actual you get you get the body conforming to what would happen to a person sitting like that. I I, I compared him to comic book artists a little while ago and they don't do this most of them they don't pay this close attention to the to the, act, the actual way that a body functions same thing here with you know the folds you have here um so yeah i just it's like his style basically and weirdly enough this is not somebody that has been showing up in any of the Mulo clip art packs yet. I don't think so. Um, could be because we need, you know, the, the, all the naked is hard to deal with. Well, that and he really doesn't. Uh, um, I mean, there's no real. I guess it's not, we don't really feel it's dramatic enough. It's, there's enough of a, like I said, I can, I can stream, string these together to form a story, but individually they're not, there's clearly something going on in this picture that's relatively specific, I would think, but what it is, I have no idea. And that's kind of why they're, they're not really suitable for the art packs that we do. So anyhow, they're having their conversation. He's looking horrified, or you said what? Who knows why? But then there's this illustration, which is uh, clothes have been introduced to the land of clothes, or land of no clothes. We actually have, this is something that seems to be quite rare in a lot of these ex libruses from the uh, uh, late 1800s and into the early 20th century. We have a woman wearing more clothes than the guy in the picture. I mentioned Drehaus earlier. Um, there are a couple dozen of his illustrations that we've flagged for um, to edit and put in, uh, put in some of our art collections from New Low Games. And a couple of them, uh, I went out expressive. A couple of them were actually going to be putting clothes on uh, on some of the characters because it makes absolutely no sense. Unless it's a ghost in the picture. And we're, we're, I'm going back and forth with, uh, with Hondal about this. We have a drawing. There is a guy. Um, there's an artist who's sitting there drawing some sort of picture. Behind him, so the artist has his has his pad out and he's got his pencil and he's he's drawing and looking over his shoulder is a sort of nat, slightly natty guy in a suit and a tie he's got a book or a piece of paper in his hand or a sheaf of paper in his hand and he and next to the guy in the suit and oh the artist is wearing just work clothes and a hat and the, the guy in the suit next to the guy in the suit is a woman who just has her you know, boobs hanging out and standing there butt naked. Why? Why is she not clothed, but the other two characters in the in the in the drawing are? Well, she I guess she could have been the model. I mean that that that's one logical reason. But looking at the picture, it makes, it makes no sense. So we're probably going to go go in and play around with Photoshop and. You know, put some clothes on her and probably you know have the original available as well because um you know we're 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 desecrating old art some people tell us and that could be i don't know but public domain 
can desecrate away. It's kind of like people making a uh, a slasher movie about Winnie the Pooh. Um, but the other way, the other way around. And actually, some of the some of the some of the pictures we've uh, reduced clothing on some of the characters because it, it looked more reasonable or better. But none of these these have not none of that has gone on with any of these fighters pictures. It's just took out the text. And that's really all the sort of alterations that have happened here. And that's most of them. I mean, it's, it's not that often that we, except for comic book panels. Comic book panels, we have to do a lot of work with to make them, uh, most of them work as effective standalone operate uh, illustrations. And then there's this one, just to keep it moving a bit here. Uh, We got Water Boy. He's wearing clothes. He's with a couple of young people, not wearing clothes. He's talking to them about something. And this is a, definitely another one that is. Um, this is it echoing the sort of naturalist thing that um, Fidus was very much into. Because so you got nature all around in the framing device and then you got the characters in the middle there so he's probably imparting wisdom to these young people even if the one on his uh one on, his, on well on the, on the left or stage right however you want to look at it um uh, probably a, a young girl i guess based on the way the chest is drawn um he's telling her something and she, she's either looking Wow, that's fascinating. Or again, she's looking at him with kind of a look of, what? Huh? Not not quite sure. But and of course, they got their what cocaine spoons up here. <laughs> but anyhow, that sort of takes me to, I think, basically the end of what I had ready. I didn't uh, only. You know, only had about a 10 of these prepared to look at. And yeah. Yeah, that's really it. And then, of course, there is the end of Poor Water Boy, which we had the end at the beginning. And there is Full Circle Water Boy, the last moments of Water Boy. And the... His last words, I can't breathe, he died happy. The end. So that's the end of Waterboy. And I think that is about the end of this little broadcast. Uh, if anyone is out there, if, you know, Carrie's out there, whoever's out there, um, thank you for, for watching. I'm glad you stuck around this long. Hit like, hit subscribe. Please do all the YouTubey things if you enjoyed this. Um, make comments below. Let me know if you want to see some more Fidus art. Uh, you would like me to throw up some uh, uh, some Istvan Drehos uh, art. Uh, let me know. Just post in the comments below. And on that note, I am going to drink some more eggnog and maybe put in some uh, some liquor in it. Or not, because like I said, I have really more to meet tomorrow. But on that note, I am going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody. And like I said, if you're watching, please let me know by liking or disliking and so on and so forth. Everybody, you hope you're having a good day, good evening, good whatever, wherever you are. And I will see you next time. Oh, well, probably next time will be Monday. Uh, Monday, yeah, probably Monday. I will be doing another 100 proofs that the Earth is not a globe. Do another four of them. Wait, no, what is Monday? New Year's Eve is coming up, isn't it? Let's see. 
Okay, Monday is the first. So, yeah, Monday evening, start kick, kicking the year off with uh, um, very important, important stuff, educational stuff. Um, and, yeah, see you then. Have a good evening, a good day.